Happy Holidays from Honest Trailers. We'll be back in one week with some of this year's biggest hits. But until then, here's a bunch of old trailers we found next to Walt's head in the Disney vault. From the studio that brought you Snow White, Fantasia, and the story of menstruation comes the fairy tale that's been adapted for film again and 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 coming soon to a theater near you again Cinderella revisit the animated classic that will cancel out all the empowering things your daughter learned from Frozen leave the sewing to the women where girls are taught to be pushovers do all the housework and that their problems will disappear if they're hot enough to land a rich husband Get swept away by the tale of Cinderella, an orphan girl enslaved to her stepfamily, who's either a powerful druid that can talk to animals, where in the trap, or years of being locked away in a castle, knitting sweaters for mice, have slowly driven her mad. Yes, I know it's a lovely morning, but it was a lovely dream too. Yep, definitely crazy. But everything will change when she meets her fairy godmother. A guardian angel who's waited years to improve Cinderella's life in any way, instead of helping her out when her parents died, or when her stepfamily forced her into slavery. Thanks for the dress, lady, but it would have been more helpful if you bibbity bobbity called Child Protective Services like eight years ago. Even though Cinderella's name is the title, spend more than half the movie watching a cat try to contain the army of vermin who have infested every corner of the house. And for all his reasonable efforts to contain the rodent horde, gets Bran Stark out the window. <coughs> Savor the age-old love story between a prince who couldn't be bothered to find his own wife and a king so desperate for heirs he doesn't care whose uterus his son uses as a baby factory. Whether it's a hermit maid who talks to mice or just someone with the same shoe size. This slipper may fit any number of girls. That's his problem. Whatever. So travel back to a simpler time and sing along to the classic songs you've loved since childhood, like the song that inspires false hope. This song is about deception. Most dreams just don't come true. But I am the rare exception. I'm skinny and pretty and cute. The Cute Little Mice Song. We are mice as smart as people. We can kill you if your sleep will go ahead and tell somebody. No one will believe you. Watch us hand all the scissors. We'll tear apart your innards. Stab your eyes out with a needle. Watch us get medieval. So don't mess with mice who are as smart as people. And the Oscar nominated gibberish song. Blurpity blurp a derpity derp a blibbity blabbity blunk. Anything rhymes if you make up the words slippity zappity flippity flappity. These writers clearly were drunk. Starring, I ain't saying she a gold digger. Bram Stoker's Dracula, The Kardashians, Wilford Brimley, Prince Foot Fetish, Rosie O'Donnell, Modest Mouse, and unrealistic expectations of relationships that girls carry into adulthood. Sweeping Beauty. I know the stepmom was bad, but good luck with the father-in-law. If anything goes wrong... <laughs> you loved Hook. You think Pan looks kinda cool? And you laughed your butt off at NBC's live version. Peter Pan has found a mother. <laughs> Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> now, revisit the animated classic that will make you say, this is way creepier than I remembered. Peter Pan. Prepare for a film about an immortal trickster who spies on you through your bedroom window, sprinkles you with dust that makes you feel like you're flying, then kidnaps you to a war-torn island where full-grown adults force orphans to join their ranks or die. It's like a magical Sudan. 
Leave your everyday worries behind as you travel to Neverland and trade them in for more serious worries, like being burned alive. Burn them at stake. Drowned by mermaids. We were only trying to drown her. Or having your throat slit by pirates. And join the Lost Boys, an all-male group of motherless furries who live underneath a tree that is clearly still used for hanging people. Hangman's tree. This is a kid's story, right? Want to hear about the time I cut off Hook's hand and threw it to the crocodile? See this magical realm through the eyes of the darling children. Three darling children who turned out okay even though they were raised by a dog. Get left home alone and live with this rageaholic who looks nothing like them. But they sure look a lot like Peter Pan, and their mom definitely believes in him. Mrs. Darling believed that Peter Pan was the spirit of you. Just saying. Opposing Peter Pan's fairy dictatorship is Captain James Hook, a man who's given up pirating to focus all his energy on murdering a tween. And when he fails, takes out his impotent rage on his life partner Smee. Or really just anyone. <laughs> Whoa, did, did he just kill that guy? But it's not all darkness, violence, and Oedipus complexes. You can be our mother. I think I'll give you a, a kiss. There's plenty of sexism to go around, too. Get on with it, girl. A jealous female can be tricked into anything. Girls talk too much. <laughs> yes. But who cares about sexism? Because Disney makes up for it by including lots of roles for Native Americans. Oh. Well, I don't even remember that part. Wow, that is really bad. We're out to fight the engines, the engines, the engines. Okay, enough. What makes the red bad red? Enough. Stop. Those red skins know this island. Just switch to another Disney movie. Well, I'm glad there ain't gonna be no trouble. Not that one. We are Siamese, if you please. No, don't show that one. Show a different one. Uh, yeah, I've seen all that, too. Oh, that one's so much worse. Shanghai, Hong Kong, Ik Fu Yang. <laughs> These are all so much worse than I remember. Go to starring. Go to starring. Starring. Teen Mom. Link. Twerker Bell. Buster Bluth, the Washington D.C. football team, Smee Zisu, and some Little Mermaids, Disney's Michael Jackson. So his name was Hook before Peter cut off his hand? And I thought Scar was a convenient villain name. From the author of Ricky Ticky Tabby and The White Man's Burden? Uh oh, comes the animated classic that will get bare necessities stuck in your head and have you struggling to remember anything else The Jungle Book. Before you catch the latest live action remake of an old Disney classic, go inside The Jungle Book Book Movie for a barely feature length collection of random scenes tied together by a plot as thin as an orphan's loincloth as this young boy is passed from one jokey singing animal to another until a tiger finally shows up and probably burns to death. The End Journey deep into the Indian jungle reimagined as a swing in 1960s hipster bar to hang with a bunch of jazzy bebopping animals, a couple of squares and downers, and a half-naked little boy that everyone is extremely touchy with. Let's go, you You let go of me! No, 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 we don't do that here. Have a banana. I know what you're trying to do. Give us a smile. Stranger danger, stranger danger. Stroll aimlessly along with Mowgli, this illiterate, unvaccinated child who really should have been eaten by now. He's so stubborn and whitey, you'll almost understand why he got abandoned by his parents. Abandoned by his wolf parents. The man cub can no longer stay with the pack. Abandoned by his panther dad. From now on, you're on your own. Abandoned by a troop of elephants. I'll have no man cub in my jungle. And abandoned by his panther dad again. I give up. Until he finally gets the chance to abandon them back and do God knows what to that little girl. Enjoy Disney's signature handcrafted animation. Then enjoy it again as they recycle the same shots over and over. Oh, <laughs> Look out for yourself, can you? You have the word of Bagheera. Well, don't just stand there. Young and helpless. Then recycle them even more in other Disney movies. That's like Michael Bay lazy. 
So forget the plot, because there isn't one. And besides, you're only here for that great song. And a bunch of others you couldn't name with a gun to your head. Featuring the Is This Even a Song song. There's no need to sing along, cause this barely is a song. It's so monotone, it's a boring drone. Oh. But there's no need to prolong, so let's get this boring song. The Time Killing Gibberish Song. Boom and time. Gibberish. I gotta kill some screen time. This song is four minutes long. Zit up a zit up time. We don't want Hey, as long as it rhymes. The Touchy Uncle Song. I'm a creep. Don't trust me. Like a van. With free candy. The Weekend Pork When We're Older song. Lead you on, lead you on. I'll flirt with you from a distance till the day that we can pork. And the only song that you actually remember. Look, you're a homeless refugee, a diapered homeless refugee. If you don't starve, you'll get eaten alive. Yes, you're a liability who almost ends up killing me. In real life, I would eat you to survive. Starring Jim Mowgli, The Big Belooski, Black Panther, Tiger Scar, the exact same voice as Winnie the Pooh. Creepy, right? <laughs> and Louis Armslong, The Jungle Boar. So wait, isn't this movie supposed to set up Tailspin? Why didn't Blue just fly Mowgli back home in the Sea Duck? This movie may have been boring, but we can all agree that Tailspin was freaking awesome, right? In 1989, the same year that Taylor Swift was born, the world met an even doughier eyed girl whose songs got even more stuck in your head. The Little Mermaid. Travel under the sea to the whimsically fascist kingdom of Atlantica, where some fish are allowed to swim free, while others are forced to drag the ruling class around in their chariots, or use their own bodies as instruments. And meet Ariel, a half-naked 15-year-old and confirmed hoarder. Follow along on her literal fish out of water story as she falls in love with the human Prince Eric because he's hot. He's very handsome, isn't he? He's so beautiful. The only thing swimming in their way is the most clearly evil villain in the Disney pantheon, Ursula. The sea witch? No, she's a demon. An old witch who keeps the tortured souls of her victims in her front yard, eats seafood, and hates Ariel's whole family. But none of that will stop Ariel from trading away her voice for a pair of legs and a 72-hour time limit to French a stranger. He is quite a catch, isn't he? <laughs> Get swept up in a fantastical romance where love conquers all. If by love you mean acting like a clueless mute brat so an older guy will make out with you. And enjoy the vintage Disney classic with an equally vintage message for today's young girls. Look pretty. You gotta look your best. You look wonderful. But without my voice, how can I... You'll have your looks. Surround yourself with friends who are dumber and fatter than you. Abandon your family to marry a guy you just met. And if you're not happy with the contract you signed without even reading, get your fiancé to murder the person who outsmarted you. So strap on your fins for the musical you can't help but sing along to. Featuring songs like The Dumb Mermaid Song. I'm a dumb mermaid who doesn't know sh Don't know what this is or that is either. The obligatory villain song. These boring bad guy songs. So bland, so blah. But to move the plot along, the villain has to have a song. But in the soundtrack, it gets skipped. The shouldn't you ask for consent for a song? Sing with me now. Sha la 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 go for it too. The fish rinse set down good for you to pork the girl. Sha la la la, why not raise his stakes to carpet match the dress? Find out and pork the girl. The traumatize your kids song. 
Killing fish! Killing fish! Yes, we show children this. Even though the heroes are all fish. Like if they made sushi of Nemo and Dory, you'd have something as messed up as these. And the one we're about to get stuck in your head. It's so catchy! It's so catchy! It's so catchy. It's so catchy. There's no escaping. This song's amazing and so catchy. so catchy. You'll never get it out your head. You'll sing to words until you are dead. Even when you sleep, it plays on repeat. It's so catchy! The message is kind of sexist. Girls don't need brain cells, just big old seashells. Also, don't be fat, but you'll ignore that, cause it's catchy. Starry, cheese well seashells, white Aladdin, Inky Minaj, Fish, the closest thing this movie has to a black person, Jack Gandalf, and Whining Nemo, The Little Waistline. This movie would have played out way differently if her top half was a fish instead. It's a tale as old as time, a song as old as rhyme, an enchantress turning an 11-year-old into a feral monster who 10 years later traps a girl in a castle until she loves him. You know, that old chestnut, Beauty and the Beast. Welcome to this poor provincial French village where everyone has an American accent. It's not right for a woman to read. What's wrong with her? She's crazy. Marie, the baguette. And meet Belle, daughter of the local killing machine inventor. Belle, look out! Belle longs for adventure, and she'll get just that when she's kidnapped by the Beast, a prince who's so bad at his job, he's been missing for 10 years, and no one seems to notice. What is this place? Watch romance bloom between her and Prince... him. They never do say his name, do they? In this fairy tale that teaches every kid it's what's on the inside that counts. But it doesn't hurt to be so rich you own a castle with its own library and some magic slaves. Cheer as this strong, smart, independent woman rejects this violent, controlling, bad-mannered, hairy dude who imprisons her dad for this violent, controlling, bad-mannered, hairy dude who imprisons her dad. Wait, why does he lock up her dad? The dude clearly wants to be left alone. I'll give you a place to stay. Couldn't he just, you know, let him leave and get eaten by wolves or something? That seems a lot easier than feeding an old man for decades. But Belle isn't alone. She's trapped with dozens of living objects that raise dozens of uncomfortable questions like, did everything that moves used to be a person? Like, are all those plates people? And what happened to all the actual stuff? Did it merge with the servants? Will they go to trial for murdering all those villagers? That bureau straight up crushes that guy. If the beast earned the curse, why did all his servants get deformed too? Man, this movie is messed up. So be Disney's guest at this tale as old as Stockholm Syndrome which was the first animated feature to be nominated for Best Picture, but lost to a movie with a very similar plot. You will join me for dinner. It rubs the lotion on its skin or else it gets the hose again. And managed to distract us from its messed up story with some of Disney's most beloved songs, like the I'm Too Good For This Play song. There goes the baker, oh my god, I hate him. Doesn't he know I'm gluten free? Everyone here is so lame. Oh my god, I can't even believe this stupid town. Hey, grab it, Belle. Good morning, peasant. Where are you off to? The bookshop. I just finished the most wonderful story, but you probably don't know how to read. Sweet Christ, you read? No one cares. Shut up. I'm trying to know she looks like we are no better. I like her man because it's smell. And if it doesn't now, it's a blur. The treat is like with Jack. Yeah, the nine she's the first to let me the Sucking Yourself Up song. I guess he's rich and sometimes kind, but he looks like a woolly mammoth shaved behind. I do love dogs, but I'm not sure that a dog man is someone I think I could pork. The It Sucks to Work Here song. 
Go ahead, stuff your face. We are both stuck in this place. We got here with no idea. We turn into an IKEA. There's no bricks, there's no pay, and we're trapped in here all day. Just because my boss was a dick, I become a French candlestick. None of us deserve it. Our poor friends eat twilight. That guy used to be a restaurant made to be. Now for the ten years pass, he only sees me stars. I must confess, we are oppressed. Get snapped in half if we protest. We're so stressed and depressed, let us rest. And the toxic relationship song. Cut her off from friends. And her family. Throw her in a cage. Fly into a rage. Unpredictably. She can't get away. She can't be released. Starring the CrossFit Bro, a pity lafu, furry guy in a little coat, must love dogs, this French guy's on fire, it's always 435 somewhere, tea she poured, and this young boy in an old man's mouth. His mustache tickles, mama. Ugh. Saved by the bell. Do I still have to sleep in the cupboard? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You have 20 brothers and sisters, so yeah, you probably do. <laughs> From the studio, who's not exactly known for tastefully handling other culture stories, comes the 25th anniversary of a Middle Eastern fairy tale that would never be made today. Praise Allah! Aladdin. Journey to Agrabah, an ancient-ish Arabish land ruled under strict Sharia law. Do you know what the penalty is for stealing? And meet Jasmine, a princess struggling with the ultimate first world problem. I don't want to be a princess anymore. She's a strong, independent woman who won't let herself be married off like a piece of property until she meets a sexy bad boy. Watch her slum it up with Aladdin, a hunky thief with no home, no parents, and no nipples who steals food and gives it to even smaller, cuter orphans. Aww, so sweet. Together, they'll create the most realistic love story in Disney history, as the guy asks the girl to trust him. Do you trust me? Do you trust me? Then says whatever it takes to get into her MC Hammer pants. Tell her the truth. No way. And at the end of it all, must face the consequences of his pathological lying by getting everything he ever wanted. Sit back as Robin Williams takes over the film as the magical genie, who's so powerful, he does impressions of people who won't be born for hundreds of years. The ever impressive. I can't believe it. I'm losing to a rug. Right here for your very much wish fulfillment. All right, Sparky, here's the deal. I can't bring people back from the dead. Kids just love a good Peter Lorre. Enjoy his non-stop improvised riffing that made him everybody's favorite part of the film and every Disney animator's worst nightmare. The exits are here, 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 anywhere. Oh, they're poor, poor hands. Conspiring against them is Jafar, whose goatee, black robes, and snake staff should really tip people off that he's evil. A princess will marry me. And his accomplice, Iago. I can't take it anymore. Who is now the second most famous bird Gilbert Gottfried has ever voiced. Affleck. Follow along on an adventure that made people spend way too much time thinking about what they'd spend their three wishes on and taught kids that it's not how rich you are, but what's inside that counts. If by inside you mean inside a magical lamp that can make you rich. So get ready for a movie that if it weren't for the genie in the music would be pretty by the numbers. But man, is that genie funny. And man, is that music good. Featuring unforgettable songs like the narrator song. A framing device. For this whimsical tale The credits will go Much faster, you know So the young kids won't fail The Telling Kids It's Okay to Steal song Stealing, it's fine if you need it Get yours, forget the police Feed me or I will disturb the peace 
Cheese. Where did you, you get a French baguette? That's how cartoon bread strong. The Take Your Kid to the Bathroom song. Time to pee, nothing to see, release your agua. Wash your hands, zip up your pants, you can trust me. Aladdin's turned to a prince. Don't worry, it'll make sense. No need to whine anymore, your, your kid, kid can pee. The kidnapping your date song. I just kidnapped this girl. Cause her midriff is sexy. We are up here, now let's see if she'll rub my lamp tonight. I'll pork this girl. As long as that's okay with you. No creepy long faced dudes or family feuds to keep us both from porking. You'll pork this girl. Your sentient rug can watch us too. Harder than a blue. And the Robin Williams song. Can Josh Cad do this? Can Jack Black do that? Can Jim Carrey pull this off without his mask? Mr. Hugh Jackman's son is Saint Atoni. The torch can pass, go ahead, recast. But I'll always be the best, always be the best. In the remake, talk or rest, it'll be a mess. Cause I'll always be the best genie. Yeah. <laughs> you ain't never gonna recast me. Starring Al Liar, Blue Jasmine. Maleficent, the original Angry Bird, Curious Abu, the hardest level in the Super Nintendo game, really ties the room together, and Robin Screen Time, a genie. That Jasmine is so hot, right guys? Maybe the hottest Disney princess ever. Well guess what? She's 15 years old. Don't you feel gross now? Well at least it's okay for Aladdin to- uh oh. From visionary director Tim Burton, I mean, from writer Tim Burton, uh, with music and lyrics by Tim Burton? No. Well, what did he do? Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas. Suit up for a heartwarming holiday classic, full of incredible animation, amazing songs, and haunting visuals that makes every emo kid feel special and unique, even though they're all in love with the same movie. Aww. Journey to a magical forest, where inside each tree lies a world dedicated to a single holiday, except for all the Jewish ones, and discover Halloween Town, a land that exists just to throw one party a year. There's only 365 days left till next Halloween! And the rest of the time, rehearses their big dance number, I guess? Meet Jack the Pumpkin King, a manorexic skeleton. When he tires of his life of fame and fortune, he'll set off on a grand adventure of cultural appropriation. But you're the Pumpkin King. Not anymore. As he hijacks Christmas, <laughs> traumatizes children, and lets a demon have his way with Santa Claus. What are you going to do? I'm going to do the best I can. Ah, see, this is what happens when you take Jesus out of Christmas. Experience a whimsical one-sided romance between Jack and your first goth crush, Sally, a suicidal cutter who can't stop roofing her dad. That's twice this month you've slipped deadly nightshade into my tea and run off. Three times. She'll pine to jump Jack's bones, even though he never listens to a word she says, until they randomly fall in love and live happily ever after the end? Seriously, the movie's like an hour long. There's really not that much to it. So enjoy this short but sweet film that launched an entire genre of creepy stop-motion kids' movies that we mostly remember for its gorgeous score and catchy music with unforgettable songs like the Is This a Halloween or Christmas Movie song. What's this? What's this? Is this a Christmas flick? What's this? Then why the spooky shtick? What's this? Like gremlins or die hard, it's kind of both things. Hey, just pick one and commit! What's this? 
Is it Christmas or is it Halloween? It's mixed. Take one look at this scene. You see, the streets are lined with toys and happy children, but I look like I might kill them. How can two things so divergent coexist? Screw this. And the perennial classic, the We Keep Hot Topic in Business song. Boys and girls of every age, wouldn't you like to shop some strange? I am the one selling Deadpool goodies, anime shirts, and Doctor Who goodies. Do the arithmetic, this film funded it. Out of me, out of me, out of me, out of me. Starring Slenderman, Helena Cotton Carter, a two faced politician. Oh, I see what you did there. Duckman. Remember Duckman? Rudog the Dead Nosed Reindeer. And Evil Laundry. A Christmas story? That scene was terrifying, but at least we know from the black lights that there's no uh, DNA on Santa. Ugh, I've got to stop watching this for you. Before there was Frozen, relive the peak of Disney animation, followed immediately by its downfall. The Lion King. Revisit the original tale of a royal heir whose parents die, prompting them to run away from their kingdom. Then sing a song about letting go of their worries while things fall apart back home and return to defeat an evil prince. I knew there was a reason I liked that movie. Journey to Pride Rock, an animal kingdom with some incredibly generous borders. Everything the light touches is our kingdom. And its own version of New Jersey. What about that shadowy place? Must never go there, Simba. Where all of its African animals talk like they're British. Good morning, sir. Evil British. It's to die for. Latino. Que pasa? Jewish moms. So, where you from? Gangsta. There ain't no way I'm going in there. Or CNN. Remember who you are. Witness the birth of Lion King Simba, an obnoxious know-it-all who rubs his privilege in everyone's face. My dad just showed me the whole kingdom. And I'm gonna rule it all. <laughs> Watch as Simba's life of leisure is shattered by his evil uncle, a lion who was either named Scar by coincidence, or he got stuck with a really mean nickname. Get ready for a G-rated movie filled with domestic abuse. I'm ten times a king who does a was. A child raised by a same-sex couple. Not that there's a problem with that. And the most traumatic death of a parent since Bambi's mom got shot in the face. Dad. We gotta go home. <laughs> Hakuna Matata? So let Frozen go and experience the best music of any Disney musical ever with unforgettable songs like the Be Careful What You Wish For song. Oh, I just can't wait till that dies. The Plotting Evil Stuff song. So prepare because I am the bad guy. Be prepared for me to do bad guy things. The catchy song to distract kids from the horrific death they just saw. I went through trauma at a very young age. Don't be a downer, kid. They just killed my dad. Forget all that. An African catchphrase. The slow jam. We are gonna pork tonight. But now it's time to park. And the song that fools us into thinking these animals live in harmony. Now I don't know uh, what our words really are. It's okay. We'll make them up. We'll make them up. No one knows what we are saying. But it's fun to sing it anyway. No one knows at it's all. A
Dari, Lion Jafar, Bird Sebastian, Ren and Stimpy, Ed, Ed and Eddie, Doomy Eyes, Dad Vader, and Kimba the White Lion. Seriously, look it up. The Lion King. Wait, if Mufasa and Scar are the only male lions in the pride, then Nala's dad is probably... Oh no. This summer, we're getting honest about summer blockbusters past and present. This is Honest Trailers Blockbuster Summer. Now that you've finished The Mandalorian on Disney+, Plus, given up on Artemis Fowl after 10 minutes, and put Zenimation on in the background while you text. It's time to squeeze the last bit of value out of your seven bucks a month by revisiting the low-budget spin-off of a syndicated Disney afternoon show yeah. that clocks in under 80 minutes with credits, yet is one of the best films of an otherwise soft era for the Big D. Sorry, Dinosaur, at least you only cost, wow, $127 million in 20 years ago money. Alrighty then. A Goofy Movie Welcome to the world of Goofy, where the fish are fish, the birds are birds, and everyone else is somewhere on the spectrum between dog, cat, and man, where you'll see slapstick legend Goofy like you've never seen him before. A suburban dad desperately trying to connect with the son who hates him. What the heck are you trying to do? I'm trying to get away from you. What kind of yucked up kids movie is this? <laughs> Every teenager thinks their parents are the most embarrassing people in the world, but only Goofy Son Max can make a solid case for it. He's out to ditch his dad and get with Roxanne, a girl he's never spoken to. She finally says hi to me, but puts on a pedestal and is so thirsty for, he literally sees her in the water. Eh, can't blame him. The mid-90s were a golden age for animated love interests. Together, this goof troop will set off on a road trip across a post-apocalyptic mirror dimension that's geographically identical to our own and bond as they narrowly avoid committing vehicular homicides. Dad, you got this. Kill. Kill a mine and rescue Max's best friend from his abusive dad? If my dad catches me with this, he'll kill me. If my dad finds out, he's gonna nuke my entire existence. My dad is gonna smash me like a bug. Uh-oh. In a film that teaches us the importance of clear and honest father-son communication. But since it has the same screenwriter as Aladdin, it also teaches us how lying to girls just makes them like you more. I really am a prince. Hmm. My dad, um, no, no, Snow's power line. Oh, yuck off. <laughs> yuck, yuck. <laughs> so buckle up for the Disney adventure with the biggest heart and the lowest stakes, where instead of rescuing a kingdom or breaking an ancient curse, the hero must endure spending time with an actually alive parent. Speaking of which, where is Max's mom anyway? Full of amazing songs from Tevin Campbell as Powerline. <laughs> Skippable songs from Goofy. Do you long to shed your weary load? And the exact amount of Polly Shore before it gets obnoxious. Look, it's the Leaning Tower of Cheesa. Huh. That's it. Stop right there. Perfect. Not a second more. Story: The Dog Father, Lil Bow Wow. What did he hold, neighborino? Wait, his name is PJ Pete, Pete Junior Pete, and his dad is Pete Pete. How did their civilization last this long? Kelly Kapupski. Skipping school? Inconceivable! Cheese the juice. And all dogs flow to Tevin. Mad Max Furry Road Trip. So, are we gonna talk about how they're being followed by nuns everywhere they go? They're part of this forever Westwood Hall. From the studio that dominated the early 90s with The Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast, and Aladdin, comes an absolute stinker that kicked off more than a decade of garbage. Pocahontas. 
Meet Pocahontas, a product of Disney's underage thirst trap era. She's a princess based on a real 12-year-old sex trafficking victim, transformed into a dryland version of Ariel. I expect those rules to be obeyed. You disobeyed me. Daddy, I love him. I love him, Father. In this all-leg adventure that's just the Little Mermaid without the catchy songs, sense of fun, or knowledge that they're all about to die from war, famine, and disease. But, uh, look over there. Pretty waterfalls. When you need an Australian to play an Englishman who sounds like an American to patronize an Indian, you call Mel Gibson. We've improved the lives of savages all over the world. Savages? He'll play John Smith, a guy as bland as the name John Smith would imply. I'm John Smith. Watch this explorer discover he has so much in common with Pocahontas. They're both hot. Their eyebrows don't match their hair color. And that's it. As these two characters, as thin and two-dimensional as the cells they were painted on, find love during the time of colonization, a big goof up with plenty of good people on both sides. Once two sides want to fight, nothing can stop them. In fact, the English would be friendly if it wasn't for one bad apple. In this historical epic that teaches us all, the real colonizer was love all along. London. Is that your village? Yes, buildings as tall as trees. I'd like to see those things. See there, she didn't have to be kidnapped back to London. Who said anything about her being kidnapped? If I don't look it up, it's like it never happened. When you're not stuck wasting time with Pocahontas, enjoy your time with equally boring side characters like three animal sidekicks more bumbling than Bob Chapek. <laughs> A talking tree that's a little too thorned up for comfort. I want to see him again. I want to see him again. And he's handsome, too. And a bunch of English explorers who unfortunately weren't lost at sea in the opening scene. Not a thousand bloodthirsty savages shall stand in our way. If any Indian tries to stop me, I'll blast him. Savages could be hiding anywhere. Do you think we'll meet some savages? These white men are dangerous. So this Thanksgiving, Revisit an animated musical whose songs range from forgettable mine, mine, mine for the taking. to regrettable Kill ourselves an engine. Or maybe two or three. Except for one absolute jam about how indigenous folks are mythical beings with magical powers instead of actual people who still exist. You think my tribe are ordinary people? and claim a land you think you can explain. But we are all imbued with superpowers. We know magic, we are druids, I'm a mage. I'm basically an X-Man or Avenger. The heron and the otter I command. And if you cross me, John, you will discover I can walk into this bird that's on my hand And they'll never hear your voice cry Will the end come soon When I dish out the payback for your spins I could pull you from this Lion King as mountain I control the ancient forces of the wind If you cross me then I will Grind your bones to dust until In the wind. Starring The Maze Runner, Porta John, 90 Day Financier, Trash Bandicoot. Colonial American Psycho. Mr. Smee? Chief of Staff. It's Giving Tree. Wizards of the Coast. And exactly what TLC warned us not to do. Love at First White. Going back is his only chance. He'll die if he stays here. So it ends with John heading back to England to treat his gunshot wound. By boat? Is anyone gonna tell him?
Well, Disney may be able to change their release schedule, but it's now or nothing for us. Let's moo it! From the studio that brought you the We Are Siamese song. We are Siamese, if you please. Donald Duck's unfortunate World War II adventures. Japanese customs say, always shooting a man in the back, please. And an Asian cat playing piano with chopsticks. Shanghai, Hong Kong, and Fu Young. <laughs> Comes their stab at a Chinese folktale about gender roles. <laughs> now that's what I call Mongolian barbecue. Uh-oh. Mulan. Before you see Disney's first actually justifiable live-action remake, someday, revisit the first time the mouse gave this story the Disney treatment by smushing hundreds of years of unrelated Chinese history together, jamming awkward 90s CG into beautiful 2D animation, and cutting between a grim war story and the fast-talking hijinks of a G-rated Eddie Murphy. What's your name? I, uh, I, 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 Chu. Ah, Chu. Cause I'm at. <laughs> I killed myself. <laughs> that was funny. Now back to the death. How many men does it take to deliver a message? One. Meet Mulan. She's got the classic pretty princess problem where she knows there's more to life than this. But where most princesses think they need a man, Mulan will cut out the middleman. And instead, she'll just be a man. And while she's more inclined to hug the patriarchy than smash it, she will kill a lot more dudes with snow than Elsa ever dreamed of. Holy crap, this girl's got a body count that could fill the Matterhorn. But Mulan isn't alone in her fight against the Huns. An evil race complete with fangs, claws, yellow beady eyes, and good lord Disney, these were an actual people, not the Urukai. She'll be joined by Mushu, a tiny dragon workshopping his donkey audition. Hey, dragon, dragon, dragon! And a supporting cast that's also challenging stereotypes. A gentle giant, a cricket who doesn't wear hats or sing, and a Chinese guy who sounds just like Harvey Firestein. I am worth my time. Hey, in the 90s, this was what progress looked like. At least he's not playing piano with the chopsticks. Fortune cookie always wrong. Don't show it again. But this kid's flick isn't all war and wieners. <laughs> it's also about love. Wrap your arms around the nearest pole and fall for Li Shang, the handsome captain with the body of an Adonis and the vocal chops of a Donny Osmond. Out of you. He's a little pink curious, a little Mulan furious, and very, very shirtless, creating a passionate fan base that demands an answer to just one thing. You have my trust. Why does Lee have nipples when Aladdin doesn't? A little nip consistency is all we're asking for here. At least make them an option on Disney+. Plus. So suit up for a Disney movie that, much like its heroes, has struggled with its identity because it was too American for Chinese audiences, too conservative for Lee Shang fans, and way too liberal for Vice President Mike Pence. But it still found its place in the Disney pantheon thanks to its bold heroine, charming comedy, and a few memorable songs like the stereotypically Chinese song. Hear those strings, hear the flute. Isn't ancient Chinese culture cute? Voice directors and white voice cast too. They'll get most of this time wrong. The glorified chant masquerading as a song song. That the music's what most Disney fans find charming. Sound like a song in Mulan is alarming. You can leave them. the cartoon, give us more than four. The No Time to Explain, but Mulan can fight now song. The second act is starting, and Mulan's still weak. Cue the training montage, and go take a leak. By the time you're through, she'll be a dude. Like Rocky IV, that's what songs like this one are good for. And the not so subtle coming out song.
starring Mulana Man. Dracarus is my name. I like the way you work it. No, Gemini. Shang Sings. In 1992, Chen Yu was an advertising executive in Baltimore, Maryland. Then, for reasons known only to him, he left his wife and career and moved deep into the forest. Now, he is only known as the Falconer. And realizing you've got Mulan to thank for Rick and Morty's worst fans. In honor of Disney's new movie Mulan, McDonald's is offering tender crispy chicken McNuggets and a new Szechuan sauce for a taste of the East. Big trouble in actual China. <laughs> Stop cheering! You're gonna get bits of hun in your mouth. After huge bombs like Atlantis the Lost Empire and Treasure Planet. But before a huge bomb like Brother Bear came Disney Animation's last hiccup of success before Bob Iger said, screw this, let's just buy Pixar. Lilo and Stitch. Return to the era of flat 2D animation that in this movie's case is still full of curves. Everything has kind of a, a roundness that's puffed up a little bit. Horses legs are bottom heavy, they're chunkier at the bottom. And Meat Stitch, a biological weapon on a five-star GTA crime spree. He's taken a police cruiser. <laughs> He's not just insanely violent. He's not just profoundly disgusting. <laughs> hey! <laughs> No, worst of all, he speaks like the love child of Gollum and a minion. Sneaky little Robertsies. No, 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 no. Two worlds will collide when Stitch meets Lilo and Nani, the saddest family unit in Disney history. We're a broken family, aren't we? Lilo is friendless and poor, trying to please a fish who she thinks controls the weather because her parents were killed in a storm. It was rainy and they went for a drive. Nani is a constantly unemployed teenager raising her sister, whose only friend is trying to get in her pants. Aw, oh, David, I owe you one. You can just date me and we'll call it even. And they're both being stalked by the world's most relentless child protective services agent. Did you ever kill anyone? We're getting off the subject. Wow, that's grim. Still not as grim as whatever's going on in this dog shelter. What is that thing? A dog, I think. But it was dead this morning. Then why was he in the same cage as the living dogs, you freak? Thrill as our heroes are pursued by a blatant ripoff of the Federation from Star Trek. Captain on deck. With a slightly more lax policy on global genocide. We have to gas the planet. When Stitch escapes, they'll deputize one wacky waving inflatable arms tube man and one guy with a Russian accent, so you just know he's evil. Hiding behind your little friend won't work anymore. To put on objectively terrible disguises, go on a hilarious attempted murder spree. You're mine. Stop! then abandon their mission to join the heroes at the end because, because, because the movie is 90 minutes long and Pixar's writers aren't there to help out yet. You expect me to help you just like that? Ugh. Fine. So enjoy one of the underappreciated gems of Disney's past that made a few much needed changes to the formula. Swapping original songs for Elvis, fantasy locales for the real Hawaii, and an ending that mimicked the 9-11 hijackings for one that didn't. That change made sense, but what's up with the Disney Plus version turning the dryer into a pizza storage shelf? Back in my day, we played in the dryer and we liked it. We Starring... Fight Cub. Molly. Never Skipped Leg Day. Dexter Jetster's Laboratory. Pleakly Fly Day. Ving Rings as himself. Hunk of Burning Love. And is Captain Gant too hot, or have we been in lockdown for way too long? Galaxy Past. Three days ago, I got Stitch at the shelter. I paid two dollars for him. See the snap? I own him. Sorry, Lilo. Perhaps you should read the fine print next time. This is just a thank you letter to the animation studios for their work on this movie. Take him away, boys. Once upon a time, 
Disney spent years working on a classic 2D animated Rapunzel movie. But when Princess and the Frog plopped and Shrek soared to box office heights, King Eisner decreed they start over with a joke-filled CGI romp for girls and boys alike. And you know what? It's better than Frozen. Come at me, haters. Tangled. Enjoy another fairy tale where they eat the parents before our story even begins. And meet Rapunzel, a beautiful hostage with 70 feet of magic hair. Not only can it grant eternal life, it doesn't even get nasty after dragging it through the forest. Follow along with this weird, overeager homeschooled kid who really wants to see the kingdom's annual fire hazard for her birthday. I want to see the floating lights. But everything will change when she tries to kill a handsome intruder and hide his corpse in a closet. She'll fall for Flynn Rider, Hi. a playboy with a mean case of DreamWorks face. And Flynn's just one of the narcissists taking advantage of the magic shut-in, as Rapunzel is under the spell of her witch mother, Gothel. Wait, is she a witch? Or has Disney just conditioned me to think every childless older woman is evil? Anywho, she'll use the powers of guilt, shame, and gaslighting to stop her barely legal daughter from running off with a 26-year-old career criminal and gets murdered by a chameleon for her troubles. <laughs> And that's for not letting her marry literally the first guy she's ever met, which... Ever want to watch a man fight a horse? A lot? Squeal with glee at a B-story ripped straight from a Tex Avery cartoon. As Maximus the Horse Cop stalks Flynn like the Terminator and continues the grand animation tradition of turning every animal sidekick, no matter what species, into a dog. You're such a good boy. Sit. Whoa! Stay. Ooh. Isn't that right, A.V.? Happy to see you too, huh? Bow wow. Sing along to a film that sort of gives up on being a musical halfway through, featuring half an album's worth of Alan Menken B-sides, that still manages to hit the four main genres of Disney song, joyfully going about your daily routine. I play guitar, I'll play guitar and 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 I'm an obvious villain pretending to be your best friend. Mother knows best. Take it from your mom. <laughs> I'm a tough guy revealing my soft side. Cause way down deep inside, I've got a dream. And we, I'm in love. And in last I see. Okay, before you get mad we didn't make parodies for these, you have to know the originals for it to work. Go ahead, hum the tune to Healing Incantation. I'll wait. So embark on a new Disney classic that's charming, funny, and romantic throughout, except for the nonsensical ending where her tears can suddenly heal the sick. That is, unless you're familiar with the source material, where Rapunzel's tears cure blindness since her prince gouged his own eyes out after throwing himself off the tower in despair. Now that's a grim fairy tale. Starring Golden Girl, Harry Potter, Joey Tribbiani. How you doing? Cartoon, 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 chameleon. Nobs and Shaw. And my name is Maximus Hosidius, steed to a kidnapped princess, servant to the true king, and I will have my vengeance in this life or the next. Disney's Tower of Terror. So, a young blonde girl with a wreath in her hair takes a birthday trip with her shady boyfriend to witness an annual ritual? Hmm, anyone else getting strong midsummer vibes here? <laughs> You've seen toys come to life in Toy Story. Ghost is clear. Now, kick your children's paranoia into overdrive with the exact same premise, but for video games. All clear. The arcade's closed. Wreck-It Ralph. Travel to a fantasy world where video game characters interact with each other, and an even bigger fantasy where kids leave the house for some place called an arcade? Arcadi? Instead of yelling racial slurs at each other on Xbox Live. In this charming dystopia, where living, feeling game characters spend their lives trapped in an endless cycle of violence. We've only been plugged in a week! And every day it's climb the building and fight bugs! Climb the building, fight more bugs! Yikes. Now I feel really bad for the guys inside Dark Souls. Get ready for all your dad slash older brother's favorite gaming franchises to join forces on the big screen in teeny tiny cameos and extremely subtle references. What is that? While you spend most of your time with weird hybrid characters because Disney couldn't get the rights to Donkey Kong, Master Chief, or Mario. 
but they had plenty left in the budget for Qbert. And, uh, Tapper? Hang on a second, you had the rice to Sonic the Hedgehog and you made Tapper a main character? Meet Sarah Silverman, an incorrigible PG version of Sarah Silverman. Duty? Who is secretly a princess, because Disney can't veer too far off brand. She'll race down the path of self-acceptance with the help of Wreck-It Ralph, a bad guy who's tired of being bad. I don't want to be the bad guy anymore. Who runs away to become a good guy. I could be a good guy if I wanted to. Which is bad for these good guys. But when our good bad guy realizes being bad is good if he's bad for good reasons, he can save the good guys from the real bad guy by being good at being bad. I'm bad, and that's good. We'll never be good and that's not bad. It's not as bad as it sounds. When fate brings these two misfits together, they'll journey across an arcade full of possible game worlds, yet only spend time in two of them. Hero's Duty, a $2 a pop shooter on rails that's over in like 30 seconds. And Sugar Rush, a candy-coated Mario Kart with so many candy puns, you will swear the first draft was for a Candyland movie. Milk my duds! They're Laffy Taffy! Who are you, the guy that makes the donuts? Call out the devil dogs! Nest quicksand! You rotten little cavities! Children of the candy corn! Oh, real! I'm hungry. Wasn't this movie about video games? So revisit this adorable animated adventure that finally cracked how to make a good video game movie by not focusing too much on the video games. And just like Toy Story, uses bright colors and fast pacing to distract you from its horrifying existential questions. Like, if everyone lives in the surge protector, what happens if it gets turned off? What if they plug something else in? Would the games be able to go into a microwave? Are there different routes in different arcades? What if an arcade has two Fix-It Felix games? Are they all going through the same midlife crisis? Do game programmers know what they're doing to their creations? She's programmed with the most tragic backstory ever. Isn't it dark that every game character is terrified of breaking the status quo, lest it bring instant death from an uncaring god? We'll be put out of order for good. And what the hell video game is Skrillex from? Starry, Kong C. Riley. Sarah Sugarman, Repairman Man Man, Gamergate's Worst Nightmare, and For the Love of God Don't Google Sonic Fan Art, Pixels. If Ralph really wanted to get things done, he should have just brought Kano along. Kano wins. From the studio that finally learned how to make Pixar movies and the songwriting duo behind Hasa Diga Ibowai comes the feature length music video for Let It Go, Frozen. It's been three years since the last Disney musical and 18 years since the last good Disney musical. Now the big D is back and adjusted for inflation with two princesses, two goofy sidekicks, and three different orphans. Welcome to Arendelle, a magical-ish, Scandinavian-ish country that's been cursed with eternal winter, even though their main export is ice. Meet Elsa, a manic depressive princess with a confusing set of powers like snow blasting, dressmaking, castle building, and creating life? You're alive? Um, I think so. They kind of gloss over that one. Fall in love with her adorable sister, Anna, who spends three years of her adult life shut inside a castle, even though she could leave at any time. I can't live like this anymore. Then leave. And who could forget the completely unnecessary, unexplained, magical troll rocks. When disaster strikes, watch Anna save the day by teaming up with her sister, a merchant, a hot guy, and a snowman to defeat villains like her sister, a merchant, a hot guy, and a snowman. Experience a clever twist on past Disney films that teaches girls everywhere they don't need a prince to rescue them because all men are disgusting loners, greedy murderers, or lying manipulative power-hungry sociopaths. You won't get away with this. I already have. Happy now, Jezebel? So gather the family and sing along on a musical journey that's all about the soundtrack, featuring unforgettable songs like the exposition song. Do you want some exposition? Some information through a song. The song that sounds like it's from Wicked. For the first time in forever, Disney let us sing. For the first time in forever, it's as good as Lion 
King. The romantic duet. We are about to pour. Totally gonna pour. The other romantic duet. I'm kind of turned on by reindeer. The anthropomorphic sidekick's comic relief song. When you're out of ideas, you give them a singing snowman. The one you skip. We are cutting eyes, cause we are cutting eyes. The one you don't know the words to. Soupy's a bit of a fixer upper. And the YOLO song. Get it out, get it out, get the song out of my head. Get it out, get it out, I'll sing anything else instead. Starring Forgotten Sarah Marshall, Christoph Waltz, Ugly Smurfs, Hans Gruber, Merchandising, and the wickedly talented Adele Dazeem. Frozen. You don't need true love to thaw a frozen heart. Just soak it in water for a few hours. Works on turkeys. Before you see the latest CGI kids movie that adults will probably get more out of, revisit the Disney hit that made you laugh, cry, won an Oscar, and best of all, isn't Frozen. Big Hero 6. Prepare for a movie based on a Marvel comic you had no idea existed that Disney removed all the Marvel branding from and didn't tie into the Marvel Cinematic Universe, despite the fact that it has a team of quippy heroes going up against a forgettable villain with a vague plan in a final battle with a sky-based doomsday device made of disposable robots and an after credit scene with Stan Lee. I mean, come on, this is the marveliest non-Marvel movie ever. Journey to a way less foggy, slightly more Asian version of San Francisco, and meet Baymax, an adorable combination of WebMD and a marshmallow. He's the inflatable robo nurse everyone wants to cuddle with, until you realize he's voiced by the depressed middle aged comedy writer from 30 Rock. Ew. Watch Baymax team up with this super orphaned hero. Hero? Hero. Hero. Hero? Hero? Hero. Is it hero or hedo? Hero. 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 Hero? 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 My name is Hero. Well, whatever. He's a protagonist with the hair of a Japanese anime and the tooth gap of every kid from recent Western animation. Thrill as this miniature version of Tony Stark makes inventions that will put everyone on Earth out of a job. What used to take teams of people months or years can now be accomplished by one person. And immediately transforms his inherited healthcare robot into a killing machine. I fail to see how karate makes me a better healthcare companion. Punch this. It's like Terminator 2, but in reverse. After the sci-fi pessimism of Wally, -E, experience a kid's film that's so into science, it turns it into magic, justified by the tiniest bit of scientific mumbo jumbo. Whoa. Electromag suspension? Magnetic bearing servos. Laser-induced plasma? Chemical metal embrittlement. Yeah, uh, Wingardium Leviosa and watch as these scrappy college kids create billion dollar inventions and get rewarded with dinner. Dinner is on me. Yes, yes, nothing is better than free food. Just like the NCAA. Experience a moving film about the power of friendship, forgiveness, and innovation until it turns into a cookie cutter superhero origin story. You guys, do you feel this? Our origin story begins. With a dumb Scooby-Doo twist and a supporting cast that's literally forgettable. Hey, but maybe don't leave your team stranded on a spooky island next time. Oh, man. But who cares? Baymax is Bay. So enjoy another entry in what might be a new Disney animated renaissance that takes the cold, emotionless fields of science and engineering and transforms them into a heartwarming tale with the power of hugs. Lots and lots of hugs. It's like spooning a warm marshmallow. Going for a non-threatening, huggable kind of thing. Last hug. Last hug. If I could have only one superpower right now, it would be the ability to crawl through this camera and give you a big hug. Starry, Obamacare. Hero, is it me you're looking for? A TJ Miller type. Human Segway. Dreadlock Psylocke. 
April O'Nerd, Gak, and Spooky Legos. The Incredituines. Does this symbol mean anything to you guys? We're getting another Hunger Games? When Disney slapped Frozen's name on a short film to squeeze more cash out of their biggest hit, Honest Trailers had the perfect excuse to slap Frozen's name on a video to squeeze more views out of our biggest hit, Frozen Fever. Remember Frozen? Sorta right. Since the Big D couldn't make a sequel quickly enough, prepare for a glorified music video that's trying to beat the clock before your kids grow out of their Frozen phase. Now available on Blu-ray for 20 bucks? No, that is it. Daddy is done spending money on this frozen crap. <laughs> Stop crying. We're poor now. Remember standalone princess stories like Cinderella, Snow White, and Sleeping Beauty? Disney doesn't, as we shamelessly return to Arendelle for less time than it takes to listen to Freebird. All your favorite characters are back in the exact same locations to cut down on costs and rendering time. As Elsa leads you by a string on a tour of various frozen merchandise full of not-so-subtle callbacks to the original movie and catchphrases so forced they would make Schwarzenegger blush. I don't get colds. Besides, a cold never bothered me anyway. Ugh. Witness the exact moment when the filmmakers gave up on having Elsa's ice powers make any kind of sense. In a scene where she can move flowers with her mind, change the color of people's clothing, and create out-of-control ravenous sentient life forms. Proving once and for all that Arendelle would be a safer place if they locked this dangerous witch up in her ice tower. What? She's a menace. So experience Frozen without the story, stupid troll rock thingies, or good music. Featuring one long rambling tune that definitely won't take the place of Let It Go. Wait, wait, wait. Stop the music. Don't even bother. We're not singing this one. You probably haven't heard it anyway. Starring. The following reasons Disney needs to keep Frozen relevant. An upcoming Broadway show. A new theme park. Olaf duct tape. Bud Wipes. Tiny Jeep Wranglers. Chicken Soup. Perfume. Multivitamins. Bowling. Personal Checks. This Weird Styling Head. And Horrifying Snow Cone Machines. You do realize you're eating Olaf's intestines while he watches, right? Frozen Reminder. You remember when Disney actually tried to hide the innuendos in their films? Cause those things look like chubby little di- From Pixney, I mean Disnar. Man, these two are really starting to blend together. Comes the Disney animated film that grossed a billion dollars and finally got people to stop talking about Frozen. Let it go. Zootopia. Journey to Zootopia, a place with 12 unique ecosystems and one generic pop song. In this city that's either an impossibly advanced paradise where animals live together in harmony or a palace built by our mammal overlords in the ashes of our extinct human world after war and famine wiped us from the earth. You know, one of the two. Fall in love with smart, complex animal characters and their lazy forced pun names. His name is Emmett Otterton. It's Weaselton. Gil Weaselton. Mayor Lionheart. Benjamin Clawhauser. Like Judy Hopps. Get it? Cause she's... Uh, cinema's most likable meter maid. Actually, cinema's only likable meter maid. Because seriously, meter maids are the worst. I mean, come on, I was only in there for like five minutes. And no, you haven't written the little ticket yet, cause I can see your stupid little machine right there. Get a real job, lady. My mommy says she wishes you were dead. So do I. Ah, oh, get it together, man. When Hobbs teams up with Foxy Con artist Nick Wilde, they'll work together to catch more predators than Chris Hansen and form a sort of romance. You know you love me. Do I know that? Yes. Yes, I do. That sadly they'll never be able to consummate. Not because I'm speciesist or anything, it's just that nobody in this movie has any genitals. Or even a, you know, a butthole. And seriously, how does anyone even go to the bathroom in this place? Follow along with this kids film slash noir crime thriller, full of bright colors, cute characters, allegories to contemporary racial and class politics, 
You're not like them. Oh, there's a them now. Police discrimination. Do you think I'm going to believe a fox? Affirmative action. Mammal inclusion initiative. Tokenism. Sir, I'm not just some token bunny. Sexism. So are all rabbits bad drivers, or is it just you? And racial slurs. A bunny can call another bunny cute, but when other animals do it, it's a little... <gasps> they will either teach your kid to be more tolerant, or turn them into a furry. So settle in for a fantastically animated, well-told lesson about disproving stereotypes. Even though the fox character really is sneaky, the weasels do cheat, and the sloths are slow. Oh, wait, no, does this mean I'm racist? I owned a bunch of rabbits when I was a kid. I mean, no, they were mine. Not that I, you know, not that they're property or... Oh, look, I love rabbits, okay? This, they came out all wrong. Go to starring. Go to starring. Starring NYPD Bluth. The part in the trailer that made you want to see the movie. Buffa Luther, bad. Mayor Mufasa, Shakira as Shakira. Your stereotypical Italian mobster. Your stereotypical donut-eating cop. Your stereotypical dumb southerner. And hot buzz. You get it? Cause she's a bunny cop, but she's hot too. Wait, now I can say that she's hot though, right? Dang it, am I a racist and a furry now? Oh, this movie is such a minefield. Paul and order. Let's see, Pig Hero 6, Wrangled, Wrecked Rhino. Hmm, I wonder what they think of Lion King in the Jungle Book. Are they like documentaries? Are you ready for a new kind of Disney movie? Full of strong female characters, no forced romantic subplots, and a celebration of Polynesian culture? Then you'll love Lilo and Stitch. Did not see that coming. Oh, and probably also Moana. Meet Moana, a strong, determined young woman who won't stop until she gets the job done. I am Moana. You will board my boat, sail across the sea, and restore the heart of Te Piti. Who, after 90 minutes of adventure, becomes a strong, determined young woman who won't stop until she gets the job done. I am Moana. You will board my boat, sail across the sea, and restore the heart of Te Piti. She's indestructible. <laughs> she's fearless. And she's got water powers just as confusing and vague as Elsa's ice magic in Frozen. So wait, does she even have any water powers at all? Or does it only protect whoever has the glowy thing? And if the ocean has her back, why does it keep trying to drown her? <laughs> Follow along on Moana's quest to save her homeland by following a super obvious sign. Maui lies there. In a journey that pokes fun at all of Disney's usual tropes. If you wear a dress and you have an animal sidekick, you're a princess. If you start singing, I'm gonna throw up. While at the same time being 100% guilty of them. From her cute animal sidekicks, <laughs> to her grand Mufasa, to her genie, Maui. An all-powerful, charismatic, brawling, tattooed demigod. So, pretty much The Rock. Enjoy the highest honor a culture can receive these days, having your traditions commodified by the Disney Corporation. And watch as the Polynesian people, who traveled between islands thousands of miles apart thousands of years ago, are represented by paranoid coconut lovers who would rather starve to death than sail past a three-foot break. We were voyagers. We can voyage again! How late for effort, I guess. So enjoy a film with a soundtrack people can't stop gushing about because the guy from Hamilton is involved and not even the ocean gushes as hard as Hamilton fans featuring songs like the They're Really Into Coconut song. You can't escape, we're gonna keep you around and force you to stay exactly where you are. But, but hey, we, we got, got coconut. coconut. Hell yeah! Coconut sweet. We're all obsessed with the coconut, it's so healthy. You marry a coconut when you turn 13. We worship that song and smoothie. You all are freaks. The uh-oh, we're making the rock sing song? You can smell what I'm cooking. I'll save your franchise, make money, no problem. You all recognize my voice, my vibe. But in one respect, I'm kind of flawed. I can do anything except sing. Auto-tune couldn't get me on track I'll be president someday, still I can't sing But who else pulls off a fanny pack? The Let It Go is song After Frozen did well for Disney They told me to sing a clone of Let It Go If a song about girls being free makes more money you should know Like a dad does he Missing off-brand Let it go 
Japan. The beautiful song in a foreign language that can be sang anything song. Hello, hello. I hope you like that one, because it turns out it's really freaking hard to find a Tokelauan translator. Starring Nemo, Choking the Chicken, David Glowy, Shy Guys, and wow, Troy Polamalu really let himself go. Pacific Swim. Okay, so wait a second. Rapunzel has demon hair, Elsa has ice powers, and Moana is a waterbender? Are we building up to Disney's Princess Avengers? From the studio who brought you Lion King 1 and a half, Mulan 2, and Lady in the Tramp 2 Scamp's Adventure, comes a Disney animated film that's nothing like their lazy direct-to-video sequels of the past, because this one came out in theaters. Frozen 2. Six years after Frozen melted your heart, you grew up and moved on to better things. But when there's money to be made, some companies just can't let it go. In this scattershot follow-up, wrapped around an album's worth of B-sides, that's vague and world building enough to set the stage for Frozen's three through seven and a half, Scamp's Adventure. That was epic. All your favorite characters are back to who they were at the beginning of Frozen 1. Elsa's still moping on balconies. Anna's still caught between her sister and a mister. Kristoff has so little to do, they give him the plot of a 1930s comedy act. I said you'd have to be crazy to want to marry a man you just met. Wait, what? Crazy? You didn't say I was crazy. You think I'm crazy? No. And Olaf is doing his best to hold it all together until he joins the Disney Hall of Dust. But what they all lack in character growth, they make up for in costume upgrades. Mom, I already told you. I want the self-actualized Elsa with the sparkly personal growth dress. This is fearless Queen Elsa with the gossamer dream cape, idiot. And where's new permafrost Olaf? Are you ready to set off on a quest to discover the dark secret of Arendelle? Not so fast. First, listen to this bedtime story. And then, a lullaby. There's a river. Then get a crime song stuck in your head. Then everyone just kind of meets up for a hang. Then a song about how every minute brings us closer to death. And we're all getting older. Then, wow, we're still not off on a quest yet. Okay, I guess we have time for a full game of charades. Then just one more lullaby. Sleep, my darling. And now we'll set off on a quest. Phew, Frozen 1 managed to fit all the plot and character setup into one song, with time left over to build a snowman. When our heroes finally get their ices in gear, they'll go explore the enchanted forest known as the Enchanted Forest, a hidden world full of cutting-edge particle effects and dull rejects from Avatar The Last Airbender. There, they'll learn the dark truth about Arendelle. Long ago, they betrayed the indigenous people to the north. And by long ago, I mean Grandpa did it. Grandfather? But if you think this is setting up some hard choices or sacrifice or even commentary on historical injustice, it isn't. Everything's just fine. Who else was in on the plot? Do the people to the north want revenge? Shut up! Elsa's got a water horse now. So strap in for a brand new Frozen that could get sued by Thor Ragnarok if Disney didn't already own everything. We do this together, okay? Has no one been taught our history? Odin and I drowned entire civilizations in blood and tears. But that goes against everything Arendelle stands for. Uh, made of rocks, as you can see. It seems to know it's less interesting or fun than the first one, so most of the runtime is spent reminiscing about it. Let's make a big snowman. When you pretend to be Kristoff and you're like, I just need to go talk to some rocks about my childhood. I climbed the North Mountain, survived a frozen heart, and saved you from my ex-boyfriend. Two sisters. One born with magical powers. One born powerless. What did happen to your parents? The ship went down in the Southern Sea six years ago. <laughs> Do you want to build a snowman? And if you're expecting song parodies at this point, inspiration didn't really strike twice for this movie, and it didn't for us either. So just go scream Into the Unknown as loud as you can until you pass out. You'll get the gist. Into the Unknown! No! Starring Frosty the Sidekick, The Last Black Man in Arendelle. They look like big, strong hands, don't they?
Toothless, Norwegian Rhapsody, the best friend from a rom-com that plays basketball with the male lead, the blink and you'll miss it gay character that Disney will pat itself on the back about, kid sister, kid sister, wherever I froze, she goes, and the fifth element, Rise of Ice Walker. Wow, Olaf's only three years old and he's already doing observational comedy. Every Arendellian ship has a, a compartment, waterproof. That's very clever. Although it does make me wonder why they don't just make the whole ship waterproof. <laughs> Fang, heart, spine, talon, and tail. Long ago, the five lands lived together in harmony. Then everything changed when the Drew Nation attacked. Only the dragons could stop them. But when the world needed them most, they vanished. 500 years passed, and Raya discovered the last dragon, a water dragon named Sisu. And although her magic skills are great, she has a lot to learn before she's ready to save anyone. But Raya believes Sisu can save the world. Ryatar, the last air dragon, uh, the Avatar, the la I mean Raya, and the last dragon. Journey to Kamandra, a melting pot of Southeast Asian cultures and East Asian voice actors to meet Raya, an orphan warrior princess and total dragon nerd. I might be a little bit of a dragon nerd. You're not the only dragon nerd here. Which in a world created by dragons means she's super religious? Raya will find a savior who can walk on water when she awakens Sisu, an orphaned cross between a Thai Naga and a stretched out My Little Pony, who can disguise herself as a cross between Aquafina and an e-girl on laundry day. Together, Sisu will teach Raya the importance of learning to trust others, while the movie will teach you to never trust anyone. In a different world, maybe we could have been friends. You're going to tell me where I can find those other Dragon Jam pieces. Who's baby? What? <laughs> you have to give a little trust first. Wait, Sisu, don't! It was foolish to trust someone from Fang! Don't come any closer! You're saying give people a chance, but you're showing that chaos is a ladder. Travel across this richly detailed land so quickly, you'll wish they had an Avatar-length TV series to explore it further, as you spend barely enough time with the Orphan Boone, a tragic victim of millennial hustle culture. I'm Captain Boone, the owner, chef, and chief financial officer of the Shrimp Oreo. Noi, a tiny orphan martial artist who feels like an exchange student from the Boss Baby franchise. <laughs> And Tong, a likely orphan who's lost his only child. Hey, wait a second. Raya, Sisu, Boo, Noi, Tong. Did Disney just pull off the rare quintuple orphan gang? Bravo. That is some really efficient parent killing right there. Heroes beware. Dark clouds are gathering on the horizon. Not metaphorically. The bad guy's literally dark clouds. Because when you unleash the imagination of Disney animators, these days they'll come back with, what if cloud but bad? And with a villain this lame, you better hope the real enemy was inside us all along or whatever. As the main antagonist turns out to be Raya's on again, off again, maybe friendship, maybe something more, with Namari. She may have doomed them all when they were kids. It's Fangs now. She may have doomed them all again when they grew up. She may be dooming everyone outside of her own tribe. We need to expand. If we had all the gem pieces, we could do that safely. But when you really think about it, aren't the heroes just as much to blame for triggering the end of the world? You're as much to blame for Sisu's death as I am. Actually, no. No, she is not. I'm sorry, but no. We've been watching the movie. You shot her. No. So try to stomach a story that feels like it was, let's say, reincarnated from another franchise with enough 2010s banter to repeatedly take you out of it. Do you mean Captain Pop and Lock over there? Here I was worried you were gonna end up becoming a cat lady. Something tells me you're not besties. Bling is my thing. But even on a crappy laptop screen, you'll be rewarded with better visuals than the iTunes visualizer on edibles. I mean, just look at that water. It's insane how real that looks. It's like a water deep fake. If I were real water, I'd be worried. Starring an exclusive dating app, Failcore. Does Alan Tudyk even remember how to sound like people anymore? Zuko. I know everything there is to know about the shrimping business. Let me see that tongue. 
avoid the noise. Daniel Dead Kim. And when you really want to say the B word, but you're in a Disney movie. She's the backstabbing Binturi. Bye bye, Binturis. Pay up, Binturi. Let's finish this, Binturi. Bye bye, Binturi. No good, Binturis. Binturi. Now that's not a very nice way to describe an old friend. The Life Aquatic with Team Sisu. Whoa. I got the glow! Look, call yourself the last dragon if you must, but don't compare yourself to the real last dragon. You're not gonna win. Who's the one and only Max? From the studio that colonized your childhood comes the latest culture to get strip mined by Disney for anything they can turn into movies, merch, or theme parks. But these days they've been doing it respectfully with great characters and catchy songs, so truce? Encanto. Return to Colombia back in the 19 something or others and stay in the magical family's magic casita, a house that's always listening. The house isn't gonna decorate itself. <laughs> Sorry. With a cousin who can hear a pin drop. No one has. A cousin who controls an army of spies. The rats told me everything. And a creepy uncle watching through the walls. How long have you been back here? Truly the worst place on earth to be a teenage girl. And me, teenage girl Mirabelle, the family's only muggle. Aside from the standard Disney power that lets you freeze time, she'll battle high expectations, inadequacy, and literal burnout as she struggles to understand why she wasn't granted a special gift. Though if you ask me, her gift is living rent-free in a house that cleans itself, while all her siblings get a lifetime sentence of community service when they turn five. Will you serve this community? Mira, you have it so easy. Let it go! That's what I'm always saying, bro. Smuggle a pin and pad into the theater, because there's so many characters in this one, even the characters can't keep track of the characters. Wait, who's a sister and who's a cousin? There's so many people! How do you keep them all straight? Okay, okay. As a magic candle gives three whole generations a superpower, until it ran out of good ideas and started handing out curses. There's Louisa, who's super strong. Great! Mom can heal the sick with food. Awesome! Peppa's mood changes the weather. That's more like a punishment though, right? You're lucky it's not a paragate! Antonio can talk to animals, which is cool, until you hear your friends eat your other friends. Don't eat those. This guy can shapeshift. What's that good for? Crime? Stop pretending you're Dolores or you can have seconds. Worth the shot. Dolores has super hearing in a house with two married couples. Definite curse. Bruno can see the future, but mostly just the bad stuff. Big time curse. And Isabella grows flowers? Come on, Candle, get your head out of your wax. If you can't think of anything useful, just magic up some birth control. Gasp as their once perfect home starts to become a crack house. Now it's up to Mirabelle to discover why and defeat the evil villain at the center of it all. Not Bruno, he's just lazy. You know, the mountains around the Encanto are uh, pretty tall and, uh, like I said, free food and everything. <laughs> no, the real antagonist in this movie is getting gaslit by your grandma. The magic is strong. Everything is fine. There is nothing wrong with La Casa Madrigal. The magic is strong. And so are the drinks. Not exactly Jafar level evil, but there's something off about this abuela, if that is your real name. Oh, it is your real name. Just grandma in Spanish. Well, that must have been hard to grow up with. So enjoy a story about complex emotions and long simmering resentments that all get tied up neatly in a few minutes tops. Maybe I overdo it. But if you're too stubborn to, to, to I see you. And I hear you. Yes. But who cares when the colors are this bright, the dancing is this fluid, and the music is this catchy? Because Lin-Manuel is keeping the hot streak alive with one heart-rending Oscar-nominated song and three other jams that you'll be singing for months, like the Magic Powers That Gloss Over Serious Issue song. My tia Peppa, she's got a mood disorder. She's either happy or she'll drown you in the sea. My tia Bruno. No. Pressed. Imagine how I feel, Mom! What this family needs is therapy. <laughs> My whole family needs some therapy. I guess I'm lucky that all I have is anxiety, cause this family needs all the therapy. <laughs> oh, crap. The Lin-Manuel 
Gale is trying to tell us something song. Pressure after Hamilton, put him right on top. Uh oh. Pressure after in the Heights was a total flop. Uh oh, uh oh. Hoping that in country gives him any good win. So we'll all forget his role in Mary Poppins. Overexposed, but he can't take a break. <sighs> Money's great. And the song that shall not be named. Please don't stop singing Bruno. God, no, no. We can stop singing Bruno. Help, it was my wedding Isn't day. this song happening? Okay? started playing and I'm reading my vows to the sky. Stuck in our heads till we die. The song it begins in my head, not again. again. It's become the soundtrack of my life. Who be cursed by this song? But all deep inside your Musical tapeworm Till you're going so insane Sing it while I'm pooping Like we're singing it again Like clam dogs day there's no escape Please don't stop singing Bruno Please no no We can't stop singing Bruno Starring No Door the Explorer Luigi's Mansion Swole Team 6 Instagrama The Wrong Kid Doored the Changeling. No fart goes unheard. Where video game turkey legs come from. Gail Weathers. Jose Exotic. Another easy paycheck for Alan Tudyk. And it took Disney this long to realize capybaras are adorable? Hello? Disney's Haunted by Your Tragic Past Mansion. What does Disney have against Bruno's? Silencio Bruno! Silencio Bruno! <laughs> Bruno!